Welcome back. So today we continue with Redline, the tool for instant response and computer forensic. Today we will continue with task 6 and task 7. And I have something to tell you today. Task 6, uh, there is a problem in task 6. So basically, uh, we contacted Troy Hackme and they said they are working on a fix for this task. So that was two days ago. But uh, I'm going to try it today, but at the end, I will do first task 7. We will investigate an endpoint for ransomware infection. And at the very end of this video, we will try task 6 and see if the problem fixed. If it is fixed, we will do it. If it is not, we will wait for a fix to be released. Okay, so what is task 7? So in task 7, we are informed that the endpoint is infected with ransomware. And we are requested to analyze the uh, session file from Redline and answer the questions. So, after you connect, make sure to make it uh, full screen here so you work comfortably. Open the endpoint investigation on your desktop. And then there is the analysis session one. Open it. And now we will load the analysis of the ransomware infection on this machine. All right. So now the analysis file has been imported and we are ready to start the investigation. So on the left, we have the analysis items. These items were selected by the person who just loaded the analysis file. So basically here, you see what you uh, selected when you first uh, use the red line to analyze the machine or collect the information from the machine. And here we have the IOC reports. Since we don't have IOC file, we will not work with IOC reports. So we will switch back to host and we have this info. So let's see what we need to answer. Can you identify the product name of the machine? So anything has to do with system information, the machine information, we find it in system information. So under system information, there is operating system information and here we see the product name operating system OS build and install date and other related info so the product name is Windows 7 home basic next one can you find the name of the node left on the desktop for charts there are many ways to answer this question the first one and the obvious one is to navigate through the file system we see uh, the analysis file contains information about the disks. So if we collapse this and I click on partitions, we see all of the partitions that are on the machine. If you click on disks, we have two, right? If you click on volumes, we see the volume that contains all of the system data, which is C. If you double click on that, you will see it's inf the information about that, the, the disk. So now if you go to file system and I click on file system, you see here kind of tree, right? For the directory structure on the file system. Now it's being loaded. Uh, if you want to navigate a specific directory on the file system, all you have to do is just filter it. For example, the question is asking, the node left on the desktop. So if you check back, we check on chars, and we filter only files on desktop. So on the desktop, let's look for a note file. So on the current file name, we can have a clue about the nature of the file. So see you have, for example, desktop in I, here we have an executable file, executable file, here we have HTML file, here we have a text file. And the others are uh, net user that. So the text file contains the note and this is the note. So the question is asking, can you find the file name? The file name is read this 
Find the Windows Defender service. What is the name of its service DLL? So basically, he will switch to enumerating or investigating the services. So we get out of file system and we look for the services. So basically, services are normally under. Um, let's look here. So Windows services. Now, normally you would find many services in this window so you're not gonna just uh, scroll uh, through that window and try to find the service so what you can do here you can use the search functionality and look for defender so right away we have the results and the name of the service is WinDefend oh what is the DLL name alright let's see other fields so if we scroll this to the right now here we look at the service dll column we see the name of the dll mpsvc.dll all right next one the user manually downloaded a zip file from the web can you find the file name so here we look at internet activity specifically url activity so we can go to browse URL history or find download history since we know that the activity is download we save time and we click on find download so we see many downloads so zip file let's search here for zip okay so apparently we have one zip file has been downloaded now if we make this like that we see the file name um, all right so file name column and this is your file name look how long it is next one provide the file name of the malicious executable that got dropped on the user's desktop so again, we go back to file system and um, we investigate charts desktop and we see two executable files, office setup and endermanch at server 5.exe. It's obvious that the malicious file is this because it bears the, or it bears the name of a prominent ransomware called the server ransomware. Provide the MD5 hash of the dropped malicious file and again, at the same window, if you look at the columns on the right, you see a column with MD5 contains the hash. Very simple. What is the name of the ransomware? And again, obviously, from the file name, we know we can conclude that it is server ransomware. Now that's for task seven. Let's look at task six and how it is done. So task six. You will build your own indicators of compromise file so we click on IOC editor once the program is opened we select the location where we would like to save the, the IOC file I'm gonna select desktop click on ok now it's gonna take some 30 seconds maximize this now in the IOC editor we go to file new indicator now this opens the working window here where we will configure our IOCs so if you go back we're given these IOCs we have we have got two strings and one and also file size so if we switch back here the first thing we do is we name our file so name it as suspicious Okay, we start at OR. The first thing or the first attribute of the indicators of compromise file or the or the uh, um, intrusion here is we have got two strings. So to add them, we right click, add item, and we go to file item, scroll down. Oh, you know, I got this wrong. Again, add item. 
file item scroll down until you find file string so here we go one now next here we have the five strings added to add the string here the given one copy that check back and then click on this icon where we see the properties of the item here we have the contents double click on that and add the string and now I've added your first string the next string is this again we copy that now where to add this and how to add this so basically we've got two strings so the condition here is the file either contains one one of them doesn't necessarily have to do uh, doesn't necessarily have to contain both of them that's why they are together so the condition here is or so right click or click on the item and select or again right click and select file string one more time to add the next string and the next string has been added now the next attribute is file size the file size is this one so we right click on copy that now here how to select the condition and or and or so we have to select one of them so basically the file we said has two attributes strings and the size so in order to detect the existence of this file both conditions have to match the size and the strings but under the strings we know we have two strings it's sufficient that one of them exists in the file but as far as the size is concerned the file size has to be this number so the condition here is and and then we right click we add the file size from the favorites you can find it directly size okay here it is okay now we have got the ioc file ready right click and save now close that you see the ioc file is here and now you will load this file at the red line tool so basically now we have a file that contains indicators of compromise we want to load it to red line and let the red line find these indicators on the system and give us the matches so we select the collect data collection method is IOC search collector now we browse to the file the file is here oh wait oh we select the folder that contains the file which is desktop and then as you can see it detected the IOC file we click on that and then next so here we edit our script we want what are the items that we want redline to collect on the system based on the IOC file since the IOC file contains only file attributes we go directly to disk and select file enumeration here we include the strings include files include directories we also include MD5 um, I'm also more inclined to include deleted files uh, no not deleted files to get resources and analyze the entropy click on ok here we save the collector where to save the information so we right click a new folder type IOC analysis select the folder where the uh, files will be saved and now redline will generate the recessory files to start the analysis Open directory containing portable package. Click on IOCs. This is your IOC file. Now here we start the script by right clicking on run, red line audit, run as administrator. Now we start the analysis. So wait for that some time to finish and then we will back to see the results. So here as you can see we have the statement creating IOC report is running. Now in this section, IOC report, where I am hovering with the mouse, there will be 
the IOC report, we will be investigating what are the hits on the machine resulted from the IOC file. Now the report has completed, we check the IOC reports. Okay, before clicking on the IOC report, let me explain to you what happened before. So the problem on the machine is when you click on the IOC report, it's, it's going to tell you no hits, or there will be only one hit, right? So let's try now, I'm going to click here, so I've got one hit, view hits, and we have one hit. The, the hit is on the IOC file we have just created, and this is very uh, natural result since the IOC file contains the strings and the file size. So it is very um, expected from the program to tell us that this file has few hits on the indicators of compromise. So I think the problem persists on the machine, and we cannot actually answer the uh, questions here because we have only one hit. Normally, we would have many hits that would enable us to answer these questions. So I think they are still working on a fix for this task. So I'm going to uh, postpone this task for another video, unfortunately. So that was for today. And see you in the next video.